Good afternoon, col uh, colleagues, and you're very welcome to uh, this webinar hosted by the Department of Agriculture to celebrate Ireland's role in the FAO's International Year of Plant Health. Uh, you're very welcome. Um, we have a number of very interesting speakers today. Um, and be a little bit of housekeeping at the very start. If you want to ask any questions, please use the chat function. You'll see it there uh, on your right hand side, normally off, off your screen, uh, just below questions. You'll see chat. You add in your question there uh, and you can put in your contact details as well. We'll try and get through as many as we can, and any of those we don't get through, we'll come back to you. Uh, we'll come back to you again in the next day or two to, with, with direct replies. Um, but again, I think uh, we look forward to having an informative uh, discussion today on, on uh, the Ireland's role in the international of plant health and without further ado I'd like to introduce you to the uh, Minister of State Pippa Hackett who is uh, has special responsibility for plant health uh, and I'd like to hand it over to Minister of State Hackett. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much Barry. Uh, it's great to be to, here today and look I'd love to welcome everyone uh, to this event and to thank you for joining um, with us to celebrate both the International Year of Plant Health and also Ireland's role in that. Um, as you know, the primary focus of the year is to raise global awareness of the importance of plant health and of protecting it, because plant health is really important. And I think we have a video to play now to just show how important it is. Um, I think the, the video really says it all. Um, by protecting plants, we are protecting life. So it's crucial that we can work together to, to achieve that and, and to protect life. Plants produce 98% of the oxygen we breathe and, we, and makes up 80% of the food we eat. Um, by protecting the health of those plants, we can help um, end hunger, we can protect the environment, we can reduce poverty, and we can also boost economic development around the world. By protecting plant health isn't a simple process. The Food and Agriculture Organization of the UN, the FAO, estimates that up to 40% of food crops are lost every year because of plant pests. This then leaves millions of people around the world without enough food to eat and of course devastates agriculture, the primary source of income in poorer rural communities. There are other factors which also make plant protection more difficult. International travel and trade, which can quickly spread pests and diseases around the world, have increased very significantly over the last 20 years. In addition, we have aspects such as climate change and human activity, which alter our native ecosystems and create openings where non-native plants and pests can thrive and cause significant damage. They are causing damage to native ecosystems and reducing biodiversity globally. But there are things we can do. And while some of them are about personal responsibility, like making sure, for example, to buy locally sourced plants and to check plant passports, supporting international efforts like the International Year of Plant Health is also very important. We in Ireland have been big supporters of it, perhaps in part because with our history, we have an intrinsic understanding of the importance of plant health. 
and I would like to ju just run through some of the specifics we've done. As I was saying, we fully recognise that the protection of plants is an international effort and we in Ireland have been big supporters. Indeed, my department has contributed more than €200,000 to support the year and to help it achieve its goals. I think our contribution has made a difference, not just in raising awareness at home and around the world, but also in promoting studies in the field including the most recent scientific review of the impact of climate change on plant pests. This is how it all began. The official launch of the International Year of Plant Health was in the FAO headquarters in Rome. And as you can see, the event was attended by my predecessor, Minister Andrew Doyle. This was at our stand, which was on show in the main foyer. Don't risk it was our motto and we made sure a colourful display of plant pests was on show too. Our president, Michael D. Higgins, is one of our main big supporters, very supportive of this cause, and he began our celebrations by planting a native oak in the Phoenix Park, and I, I believe it's growing healthily today. Um, myself, I was um, attended a number of events already this year, which my department has organised. I think raising public awareness, as I said, about the importance of plant health um, and my department's plant health and biosecurity strategy was key. So we ran many events, including tree plantings, information evenings for nurseries and garden centres and online modules on plant passports and traceability. The issuing of trader notices and the publication of articles in a variety of newspapers and magazines was also done. And, the, and this is the evidence of what can happen when the public are aware. What we're looking at here is an outbreak of oat, oak, sorry, process, processionary moth. And because it was notified to us by a vigilant member of the public, it was able to be intercepted and destroyed in, in jig time, I might add, by my officials. So that shows the huge importance of, of public awareness in this piece. Jeremy McGavin was, was part of our team too. And I was delighted to see him appointed as International Year of Plant Health advocate and indeed enjoy the events enjoyed by organized by Dermot and my officials during the planting of a native oak tree in his beautiful garden and I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Dermot for his participation and dedication to this international year of plant health a very important cause and finally from Michael D to me I have planted a, my fair share of trees this year um, and I recently planted a tree at uh, my department's offices in Kildare in back Weston to mark the prestigious year coming to a close. Um, there are not many occasions left um, but I'm looking forward to joining up with the German ambassador to Ireland next week to highlight the close cooperation between our two countries and I'm also deeply honoured to be invited to speak at the closing ceremony of International Year Plant Health on July the 1st. So without further ado, I would love to welcome our first presenter, the creator of International Year of Plant Health and the chairperson of the International Year of Plant Health International Steering Committee, Mr. Ralph Lopian. Over to you, Ralph. Thank you very much, Minister Hackett. Uh, it, is, uh, it is a pleasure and an honor to be invited uh, uh, here at this webinar. Uh, let me just open my presentation. Uh, I hope it can be seen by everybody. Uh, I'm talking now about the, the International Year of Plant Health and the international aspect of the International Year of Plant Health. And uh, uh, and especially also a little bit about the Finnish uh, Irish or Irish Finnish cooperation to get the international year going and to make it a success. Now, but first, before I go into this, uh, uh, I would like to explain a little bit why we wanted to make an international year of plant health. Why plant health is important? Because it provides our oxygen, oxygen it provides our food, plants, of the basis, uh, it's the basis of many medicines we have today, 
and will have in the future because many of the plants uh, are still undescribed and their medicinal properties are not known. They provide materials for shelter and they provide our foods. In short, one can say plants are life and we need to protect this life. Uh, but plants also have a uh, financial worth. And here I'm giving you uh, the numbers from the United Kingdom, which has once analyzed how much plant health is worth to the economy of the United Kingdom. And they have found that plant health uh, uh, adds 4 billion uh, UK pounds of gross value uh, from crop and horticultural sector. It, uh, uh, it, uh, it has a direct commercial value of forestry and sawmills, which is calculated to be 1 billion pounds, and 4 billion social and environment value of forestry and trees. That is a direct impact. Uh, in addition to that, uh, uh, it con contributes to the 20 billion pound uh, food and drink export of the UK economy, 20 billion pounds to the outdoor recreation industry, and 150, uh, 75 uh, um, billion pounds uh, 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 of asset values of trees, forests, and woodlands. So what we have here is a uh, an extremely high amount uh, uh, of uh, value of plant health, and we haven't even calculate in, uh, calculated in that indirect cost like uh, uh, general health uh, benefits by having a sound uh, and healthy environment. Now, when we look at the challenges why we made the International Year of Plant Health, uh, we can see that we have an increased international trade, which also increased uh, the risk of uh, unintentionally introducing pests and diseases. We have new pathways for the introduction of uh, uh, pests and diseases, like, for instance, wooden packaging material, which has been regulated now since about 20 years. We have disturbances in and the weakening of ecosystems, which makes it much easier that new pests and diseases, which are coming into a country, which are accidentally, uh, accidentally in, introduced, uh, are establishing there. And we have climate change, which uh, changes uh, the climate and the microclimate in certain areas and makes it much more susceptible to pests and disease and to higher damages. And we are seeing that already today with a number of forest diseases in Europe uh, on the increase because of higher temperatures and therefore higher damages. We also see a number of challenges to national uh, plant protection services. And these are that uh, in many countries of the world, uh, MPPO resources are diminishing uh, uh, because uh, uh, governments tend to uh, uh, streamline their operations and to make it uh, 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 and economically much more feasible. We have less plant health research Plant health research has been reduced over the last years considerably. And uh, we are trying now to compensate that by trying to have more international coordinated research. We have an extinction of taxonomic expertise. Uh, today, we hardly find experts which can describe new species. And we do have a uh, quite a few species which have been undescribed and which are not known actually at the moment. And we have less diagnostic services in many countries and diagnostic services are uh, uh, the firewall of detecting uh, new pests and diseases in plants. For these reasons, we have uh, uh, created the International Year of Plant Health because it is an effort to raise the public and political awareness of plant health to help governments and the international community to uh, uh, yes, uh, I just encountered a small problem. <laughs> Wait a minute. Okay, so the so role of national governments. Uh, uh, when we look at the International Year of Plant Health, uh, 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 
national governments have an important role to play. Uh, and here I put in a picture of the opening ceremony of the International Year of Plant Health, uh, in which uh, uh, your predecessor, uh, Minister Hackett, Mr. Andrew Doyle, uh, my permanent secret, uh, secretary in the Ministry of Agriculture and Forestry, uh, uh, Ms. Jana Rusokalio, and uh, uh, the British uh, uh, or the permanent secretary of the United Kingdom uh, uh, Ministry, Tamara Finkelstein, uh, when, they, when they opened the International Year of Plant Health. Uh, basically, the International Year of Plant Health has been uh, an example in how countries can cooperate, cooperate to get something done. And uh, uh, national governments do have a strong way, role to play in international uh, uh, plant health negotiations. Uh, many times uh, plant health negotiations is done between MPPOs. Uh, we need uh, international experts, especially in the IPPC, uh, uh, to bring forward international standard setting. And here I, I think in particular from the EU, experts are needed. However, we see in the last years much, much more a reduction of EU experts in the international arena. Uh, the Irish Finnish cooperation has been the motor for the successful declaration of the IYPH 2020. And uh, I still remember uh, in 2015 or 16, it was when we got our first voluntary contribution to the budget of the International Year Plant Health. Basically, it was seed money, uh, which was contributed by Ireland. And, uh, by the, uh, and the responsible person at the time was the predecessor of Barry Delaney, Mr. Gabriel Rowe, who organized that uh, to our old surprise. And one of the main things which I would take uh, uh, away from the International Year of Plant Health is that even smaller countries, small countries like uh, Ireland and Finland, uh, which do not belong to the heavy hitters and to the heavyweights in international diplomacy, are actually uh, able and capable of working together and basically change the world. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is, in my opinion, uh, a good uh, uh, development and uh, it's something where we can be proud of. Uh, here, I basically have the same pictures uh, as you had, uh, a slightly different focus and uh, more smiles uh, all around uh, of uh, Minister Andrew Doyle and uh, uh, the Director General of FAO and uh, Jana Huzukalio. And here, for instance, I have a picture uh, of one of the activities of the International Year of Plant Health where Ireland was involved when uh, uh, the Irish ambassador to the uh, United States of America sent uh, on Pat uh, St. Patrick's Day uh, a ball engraved with the International Year of Plant Health logo. I would like to conclude my speech and uh, thank uh, Ireland for uh, it's unwavering, unwavering and significant support to make the International Year of Plant Health a success. I think uh, uh, the cooperation has been magnificent and uh, I must say it was really a pleasure to work with Ireland together on this International Year of Plant Health. Thank you very much. Um. There we go. Thank, listen, thank you very much, Ralph, uh, for that. And, and indeed, thanks to you for, for your, your massive involvement in this. I think the relationship between Ireland and Finland is a really good one. I have, in fact, met your ambassador uh, to Ireland, um, Ambassador Riley, twice now, and your um, Minister for Agriculture there last week, um, mainly around forestry issues and land use. But it's a really strong cooperative um, uh, relationship. So I look forward to that continuing to build. So thank you very much. Um, I'm going to pass us on to now a very important person in the department, uh, Barry Delaney, who is uh, the Chief Plant Health Officer um, in my department, has a big role to do. Um, so I'll pass it over to you, Barry. Thank you. 
Thank you very much, Minister, and, and thanks to Ralph as well for his excellent presentation. So Ralph had talked about the international context, and, and I hoped maybe to show what, what we can do uh, domestically here to protect our own and promote our own plant health, because we, we have a lot uh, a lot to promote here. Um, so the reality, and Ralph has touched already, we're, we're classed as a national plant protection organisation, uh, and we're a member of the International Plant Protection Convention. And it develops standards, international standards that are agreed by over 183 countries and then they trickle down through the European uh, legislative uh, um, uh, the European legislative approach into the member state approach that we take in terms of trying to protect Ireland and the EU from, from certain plant pests and plant diseases. And as a result of a lot of what's happened in the last uh, three or four years, in particular the uh, global strategy on plant health that, that Ralph was, was key in, in getting over the line, um, we developed a, a DAFM plant health and biosecurity strategy. Um, and within that, we are hoping, we had hoped to uh, hit three pillars. That was of risk anticipation, so that's your horizon scanning uh, and uh, at the frontier, making sure something doesn't get in, uh, get in and to prevent them from coming in. Secondly, was the risk surveillance and anticipation. So basically, that's uh, that's that we do the surveys uh, uh, externally. Uh, we also survey uh, our, our producers and the wider environment. And then on that basis, that. That allows us to lay out the foundations for uh, us taking measures against pests because we, we can say we don't have them, we need to protect ourselves from them and allows us to export as well to other countries showing that we are free from these pests and diseases. And then finally in the piece that, that's more relevant today is the risk awareness and communication. There's no point doing this if, if, the, if the industry themselves aren't on board and fully understand and appreciate it uh, and also in terms of the wider public as, as uh, the Minister has pointed out already in terms of uh, the interested citizen uh, being aware of the risks and threats that are there and knowing who to inform uh, as it happened in the, in, the, in the oak processionary moth example which I'll come to in, come to in a minute. Uh, so in a little bit more detail in terms of that uh, risk anticipation uh, at the horizon scanning piece as we call it, uh, uh, the Department of Agriculture and, and experts uh, within the department uh, participate in many different fora at EU level, the European Plant Protection Organization uh, as well as EFSA and again that informs us as to what's happening and what's uh, going on throughout, throughout the world. Uh, in addition to that uh, I as a uh, Chief Plant Health Officer meet at the EU meetings and internationally and again we can uh, help focus and shape the approach at the world level, but also at EU level as to what we should be taking action against. Uh, but of course, all of this comes under the World Trade Organization piece. We can't just shut our borders and stop things coming in. We, just, we need to have a scientific justification for that. So we're very lucky in the Department of Agriculture and the Minister mentioned uh, visiting us here in Kildare. Uh, we have extensive laboratory uh, facilities here with uh, people who are experts in this aspect. So we have a pest risk analysis team uh, and they're doing, the, they're doing the frontier scanning, the horizon scanning uh, to, to make sure that if there are things on, on the horizon coming that we need to defend against that we can uh, put provisions in place to prevent to prevent that entering or establishing here and of course part of that as I've mentioned is the surveillance piece uh, we have uh, new as a consequence of course of UK exit I suppose but we have uh, brand new facilities in Dublin port and Dublin airport uh, and we have uh, experts in the port checking uh, the product plants and plant products coming in to ensure that they're free from those pests and diseases. So the next part then is moving on to uh, our risk anticipation, our risk surveillance and, and management. As I've pointed out, we have people at, at all the ports of entry. Uh, last year, we, we did about two and a half thousand inspections of plants and plant products. That includes your fruit and your vegetables, also also the plants for planting that come from, from outside of Ireland, as well as uh, wood and wood material and the pallets associated with all of that. And so last year, we would have had 70 interceptions and about half of that would have been of pests and diseases. Uh, so again, that just shows the good work that's in place. Obviously, this year, even to date were multiples of that given the the huge trade we have with our with our um, uh, Great Britain colleagues uh, again but we work closely with them and take very similar approaches to them in in, in, in having a, a high health status for excuse me for plant health in addition to that we in, in order to export we need to do our inspections and certify uh, those products so we exported over a thousand consignments to 44 countries last year uh, and again given the status of our country we believe that that can expand rapidly we, we, we have over 22 protected zones or pest-free areas and that means that we're attractive to other countries they mean if they purchase from us uh, it means that our trees our plants our fruit our vegetables are free from certain plant pests and diseases and and it allows them uh, to take those plants in in confidence 
But in order to do that, we have to have the internal surveillance that I've mentioned already. So we do over near 10,000 inspections, and these are at, at farms, at nurseries, garden centres, forests, public parks, even private gardens, depending on, on what we find. And on the basis of that, uh, these survey results, we send them back to the European Union, uh, and it, it underpins then our status as a country of having these 22 pest-free areas and allowing us uh, to, to trade and maintain the plant health status of our, of our country. And then to come to the, the, the point that, that we've touched on already by the other speakers, it's the risk awareness and communication. This is something possibly new to us as, as, as uh, ministries and departments of agriculture. We're, we're very good at doing the work on the ground, but not very good at promoting what we do or trying to get our message across to people. And so that's why the International Year Plant Health was such a, a fabulous vehicle to, to do that. Uh, and given COVID, what happened with COVID, a lot of us then, we had a lot of seminars and, uh, and uh, events planned and they went by the wayside and we relied on social media. But in actual fact, that worked really, really well because we got huge penetration that we hadn't thought we would have got before. And uh, uh, Ralph has pointed out already the the, uh, the, the message and, uh, that we showed of the story of the, the shamrock leaving down in, leaving down in Kerry, up to Dublin, where it got its phytosanitary certificate. It goes over to the United States, where my equivalent to uh, Chief Plant Health Officer uh, received the product, cleared it, and then it goes into the lovely Waterford Crystal Bowl, uh, and we can see the loud man in the White House receiving uh, receiving the, uh, the, the, the shamrock. Uh, and again, we got fabulous coverage out of that, because again, it, it, it just shows plant health is beyond just formal agriculture or formal horticulture or forestry it's, it's much broader than that and and people are interested in that message and they're they are concerned and that that was a great way of getting getting the message out in addition to that the oak procession Moth, and maybe I'll come to that in a second, just a little bit more about, about the coverage we received in that. So out of a finding like that, it's it, it, it's getting the message across. Uh, then directly to our trade, we have a, a quarterly newsletter and it's on our website as well. And that just updates people again. What are we finding in the ports? What are we finding uh, out wider? What can people do to to uh, to, to prevent any any anything happening on their farms, the best approach they can take? And then we've we've we have probably weekly or bi-weekly trader notice that's just updating uh, the, the trade about updates in legislation or updates in findings of pests that they're finding in other other countries and again we're getting positive feedback on that because people feel rather than being told you must do this and that that it's a collaborative effort in terms of trying to protect the plant health status of the country and so again as i've said to the, the professional operators the growers uh, we're very lucky we have we have excellent growers who who are very informed uh, they're very interested again they want to protect the status of ireland ireland is, is perceived as having a high health status we want to protect that they want to protect that they're seeing huge opportunities uh, in maintaining that plant health status in particular in, in in trading back to the uk and to other countries again who view us uh, as as producing and supplying plants of high health status uh, and within that we work very close to closely with them in terms of traceability and plant passports and documentation and so on. Uh, but I think the, the important part of the International Year of Plant Health and the legacy aspect of it is an actual part, in actual fact, the general public's role. Uh, and we, we've we've done as much as we can to try and uh, get that message across. And, and uh, uh, in fairness, Dermot Gavin is going to talk shortly, and he can do it far better than than us boring civil servants in suits. I mean, he, he can get that message across and show that passion of, of of what we're trying to do in terms of protecting Ireland's status, the wider biodiversity piece. But the message we've been trying to get across to people is to purchase from local nurseries, garden centres, ask questions, where have those plants come from? Should we really be buying olive trees from Italy? Or, you know, where is that lavender come from? Where are those oak trees coming from? And just ask those questions. And I think what's been very useful is within the new legislation that, that, that we're applying now is that nearly all plants have a plant passport now. And look at that. And the labels there show you whether it's from Ireland or Italy or the United Kingdom or wherever else. And just ask the questions and, and, and see what, what's best for you and, and, and your situation. Um, again, report any suspicious pest or diseases. We have an app called Tree Check, and we, we people can send through uh, uh, pictures of trees that they found that have issues, or else the emails are there, and people email us directly. And this happens quite a lot. And then the important message is that don't risk a campaign. Don't bring plant seeds or flowers or cuttings home from abroad. Again, there, the, you know, we have conditions here that are possibly favourable for some pests, and we just want to keep them out. And then again, another message which is is, is starting to become more prevalent as we understand a lot of the uh, a lot of the uh, um, fungal diseases and bacterial diseases. Clean your footwear after walking in forest parks or woodlands, you know, because there are, there are nematodes, there are fungal and bacterial uh, pieces that can come back with you. And, and that it's, it, it's amazing when you find out how outbreaks have happened and how they've linked just to something like that. So then just very briefly, just to move into uh, the plant health in action piece, and the minister has touched on this already, but it was, it was really fascinating to see it in action. Uh, we 
we were contacted early off a, a Monday morning to say that this lady was walking her dog and she saw these strange caterpillars nest on, a, on an oak tree in a park, a prominent park in Dublin. Um, you know, we saw straight away what it was. We knew exactly what it was. Um, we mobilized very, very quickly. So the nest was removed within, within six hours. Uh, and once they were identified in the lab, we took out all the trees that were associated with that. They were actually a consignment that had come from another country uh, a week or two previously, and had, or a couple of weeks previously, and had been had been planted in. Uh, so we removed those immediately, and we've been surveying ongoing in the Greater Dublin area and that park, and to date we found, we found nothing. But I suppose what was really interesting for us, and what we learned from that was that we, we tried to keep ahead of it because there were people then who were putting things on social media. Uh, so we clarified all of the questions. We made clear exactly what we were doing uh, and kept informing people as to what was happening, the progress that was being made. Uh, and for the Department of Agriculture, we were getting over 500,000 um, interactions on Twitter, which is really unheard of in terms of the interactions on Twitter uh, for the Department of Agriculture, given, given our demographics. So it was really fascinating to see that and that people are really interested in protecting Ireland's uh, biosecurity. Uh, and as a result of that, we, we have uh, we have import uh, um, requirements now for oak trees coming from from anywhere. They have to be a certain height, a certain width, uh, and be shown to be free from OPM. And our, and our surveys continue. But I think it was a really good example to show of out out of a, a crisis like that uh, how it was a great way of getting our message across. And again, what, why are we trying to do this? So this is Tory Hill in Kilkenny in Southern Ireland, um, and this is a stand of larch. And we found Phytophthora morum. You can see the you can see the browner coloured um, the browner coloured trees within that, and it was one of the earlier findings of Phytophthora morum uh, or sudden oak death. As as it was known colloquially. Um, and again, so what are we trying to do? You know, we're trying to protect the wider environment because if you move on to the next, next slide, this is the consequence of what happened. We had to fully clear the site to try and protect uh, the other forests that were nearby and close by uh, at huge cost to, to, to the forest owners and the, the, the look at the, the effect on, on, on nature and the environment around there. So that's what we're trying to protect. We're trying to, at the frontier, protect that. And so you as a, a government representative or you as a, 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 an interested citizen all have a piece to play. You all have a part to play within this. Uh, so look, thank you very much for your time. Uh, and I hope we, we've all gained something from this. Thank you. Uh, thanks, 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 Barry, for that. And look, I think, you know, even the story of the shamrock is one to roll out each year. And I think the, the wider public awareness you know, domestically now we have, I think, just to keep building on that, it's it's just invaluable to keep keep our keep our country healthy and 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 our ecosystems and and plants and and agriculture. So I'm going to pass now on to uh, Jeremy Gavin. Um, he's our our wonderful our, our international year plant health advocate, and of course, not not needing to say, an award-winning garden designer. So. Uh, and Jermyn has, I think, the, the prettiest background of all today. So I'll pass over to Jermyn. Thank you very much. Uh, hi, Minister Ralph Barry uh, and colleagues. Absolutely wonderful to be here with you today. I'm uh, coming to you from my garden in Kilmechanic, County Wicklow. We're really, uh, and first of all, it's been it's been lovely to be part of this campaign and to have a small role in terms of raising awareness of these important and ever increasingly important issues, plant health and soil health. It is amazing to think that really all human life and most life on earth really depends on this skim of topsoil, maybe 10 centimetres deep that uh, is on the earth's crust. And out of that, we provide food for ourselves, we provide livelihoods uh, for uh, people, and it's really important to pre protect that soil and to protect those plants. So I'm in this garden in County Wicklow, and as you can see, it's full of color. None of this color that you're seeing behind me, and very little of the greenery is native to this country. Everything you see here, other than a few trees down the end of the garden, including the one that Shane brought down in his uh, in, in his van, none of the plants here are native to this country. What we have in this country is we benefit from a temperate climate. That means a lack of extremes of hot or cold or wet or dry. And we can grow plants that have originated in all corners of the world. And we do. A lot of them we grow 
for our own sustenance, for our food. We know we're obsessed by spuds, by potatoes in this country, although pasta might be uh, edging in there. Um, and over hundreds and hundreds of years, we have gone out, um, British people have gone out and brought back to these islands all these plants which entertain us, which beautify our places uh, and which sustain our life. I have been increasingly struck by a moment during this campaign, by a moment in my life 15 years ago, uh, and reminded of one lady who lives in a different place who I met on a trip to Nairobi in Kenya, just outside Nairobi in the hills east of Nairobi. I'd flown out there to witness the opening of a well, and on the way out, I was reading a magazine uh, on the airplane, and it was about the snows of Kilimanjaro melting. And the snows of Kilimanjaro were providing water for so many communities in Africa. And they were melting, and yet I was witnessing the celebrations around the opening of this well. And I was being told that that's where the water was coming from. And up 30,000 feet in the air, I'd seen what the future of that water source was because of the resources probably wealthy nations like ours were using. Later on the trip, I met uh, Damarius. Damarius, as I say, was in the hills east of Nairobi, and she was a lady who was a farmer. Her husband, she had five kids. Her husband uh, went to work in the cities, came home once a month. She was told that she could only grow maize and maybe one other crop. Um, and it was an almost impossible situation. The hills there were baked tawny by the sun. And then when the rains came, they, the, the water was so harsh. It came, it eroded the land, it eroded that soil, uh, and then it disappeared. And again, the following day, for weeks and months on end, just the soil was baked. But what she did was really quite extraordinary. Single-handedly, she began to make these containers. Um, she got pieces of soil, of mud, she baked them in the sun, she plastered them with other mud, and she made tanks. And then she made an irrigation system. And after a while, she had five of these huge tanks and this irrigation system, these just channels that she had dug into the area to the sloping side. Once the water came, these tanks were absolutely filled and eventually she um, dug a, a well. And what, what she wanted to do was provide education for her kids, give them a more varied diet, have enough money to maybe employ uh, some people in the village. And now she has citrus, beans, um, maize, pumpkin, kale, onions, cabbage, pawpaw, mangoes, bananas, and more growing in that side. So that's one woman battling the elements, uh, understanding that everybody can make a difference. And Raf talked about small countries being able to make a difference. We're a small privileged country. We're a small wealthy country. We're a small country with stable government. We're a small country that is still in the EU. We're a small country that really benefits from being part of a, uh, of a bigger story. It's been very interesting for me to see what's happened next door. Uh, Brexit has come and the garden industry over there is in turmoil. I was in a nursery in North Wales, a place called Creek Farm, one of the best nurseries in the world for rare and unusual plants. And their business, their model has completely changed. They saw this coming, they understood what was happening because they cannot export easily to Ireland, where we have a lot of people who love the type of plants uh, that they grow, many of which are in this garden, to Italy where they would attend uh, plant fairs. Um, so they can't grow because there are going to be other regulations. Um, there's going to be other regulations for farmers there. We just see the trade deal that was done with uh, Australia recently. We know there will be another trade deal done with uh, America. And yet we're protected here. We're protected by a very good Department of Agriculture who have new facilities in our ports who are introducing us to this idea of plant por uh, passports, who are making people uh, aware of this idea of vigilance. Have a look around, see what's happening. If there's anything unusual, 
support it. Don't go on holidays and take seeds. As people you supposed about taking seeds, taking slips, taking cuttings to bring them home and grow some stuff. And uh, as Barry was saying, if you do go for a walk in woodlands or through the fields that I have all around me here in uh, in County Wicklow, just be aware of what you might be bringing back. We are aware in this country of what we might be uh, bringing back because we suffered the devastation of potato blight um, in the 1800s. We uh, 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 had a famine, or was it a famine, uh, because, because we were growing plenty of other crops and exporting them. Uh, but our, our stable food that we were uh, uh, most of the people in this country where uh, was eating was absolutely destroyed and we still live with the uh, effects of the devastation of population of families exporting people because of that. My last holiday abroad was to Puglia in the set of Italy and it was astonishing to see what was happening there. We were uh, living in an air or staying in an Airbnb in the middle of olive groves and yet uh, and everything looked fine and dandy and healthy and yet if we went for a drive a few miles away just like what Barry has just shown us we saw devastation and we saw tracts of land that had been cleared. The devastation was called by a fungal uh, 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 disease Generations of uh, families of farmers had been farming these uh, uh, olive trees and overnight they were being wiped out and people were didn't know what to do. So it'll take vigilance, it'll take us appreciation, uh, appreciating what we have, it'll take um, us all talking to people about uh, a new awareness of what we grow, where we get our plants from, how we grow it, how we look after our soil, what we look, uh, what we put into uh, our, our our soil, just looking and learning uh, all the time. There are, I think, signs of hope. You know, we the, the, the planet has been devastated by this awful virus that has uh, affected everybody and so affected this uh, campaign that uh, Ralph co-founded. Co co but things have slowed down a little bit and people have got more in tune with nature than they've ever been before. We have things like um, wildflowers, native wildflowers, been grown in front of Trinity College. Pristine lawns been taken out, native uh, wildflowers been put in. The motorway verges are now full of uh, bees and moths and in insects. We are understanding the uh, more than ever really the need for, uh, for pollinators. And my role in this campaign in this scheme over the past year has been, I, I, I think, to make people more aware of this privileged position that we, we can grow this stuff, uh, we can eat this stuff. Most of this stuff though didn't come from here. And as a small country, we're in the privileged position of being able to take in these messages, um, understand them, and let other people know about them. It's really, really inspiring to hear that the Irish were one of the first contributors to the budget. It's really inspiring for me to go to the department and look at the passion, the commitment that exists in the in the rooms there to understand what they're doing at at, uh, at our ports to understand that this really means something to the people that works there. It's very inspiring to have the minister here today to show the importance of this message. And it's just been a real privilege uh, to be part of this team in this past year. Thank you very much. And look, thank you very much, Jeremy, for a really inspiring account. I think you've really brought to life um, the importance of plant health, the devastation, failings in it can, can ha you know, the effects of that on, on people and, and communities across the world. Um, and I'm really glad to hear you talk about uh, the importance of soil health. That's something very close to my heart. And I think, you know, that is the building block of it all. If we get the soil right, a lot of things will follow after that. Well, we still have a, a, a time now we have for a few Q and A's. Um, I think Shane has been keeping an eye on them and I think I'm gonna pass you over to Declan Keeley. Declan's actually a former Ag College colleague of mine back in the day. So it's great to cross paths with him again in, later on in life. So Declan's going to uh, keep control of the questions and pass them around the panel for answers. Thank you. Thank you, Minister, for the introduction. Um, 
So we've had a number of questions in today after a very informative uh, talk so far. And just uh, we're going to have a few samples of the questions. And if your questions isn't, isn't addressed today, uh, we will address them through email over the next few days. So the first question, uh, just for Dermot, um, you know, you've been involved in, in the role um, of advocate in international Europe plant health. And just a question here is, how do you, uh, you know, what do you feel was the greatest achievement of the year? I think we've just lost uh, uh, Dermot there, Declan. So. Dermot, yeah, I think we've just lost Dermot. Um, yeah, trying to get back Ralph. on again. Pass to Ralph. Yeah, we can pass that question to Ralph, please. Uh, the question, what was the success of the year uh, 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 has been, uh, uh, if asked to me, I must say, I had expected slightly more, uh, but because of the COVID-19 situation, uh, it was not to be. Uh, but uh, Barry had pointed out uh, extremely well, uh, we penetrated uh, uh, quite a new audience and uh, uh, quite a new breadth of people by having an increased uh, uh, an increased uh, social media uh, presentations and uh, activity and that really uh, helped uh, in reaching millions of people we have an, an anal analysis within FAO uh, which came to the conclusion that uh, the uh, IYPH uh, posts and activities uh, 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 had the potential to be seen by over 300 million people. Uh, and that that is quite a substantial thing, even if that's only the potential. Uh, uh, but um, uh, in general, I would say we had now for one and a half years International Year Plant Health, uh, uh, the activities have been extremely uh, uh, well done by FAO and by the IPPC. And many national governments like Ireland, uh, or also here in Finland, and also in other countries, have shown uh, that the national services have taken the opportunity and promoted plant health to a very wide audience. So I must say the international year has been a success. Uh, 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 also, the main activity, the one of the main activities, the International Plant Health Conference, which we actually had planned for this week or for next week uh, in Helsinki will not take place. Okay. Thank you, Ralph. Uh, just a question for, for Barry here that has come in. Um, Barry, um, from, a, from a plant health point of view, Joe, what's the biggest concern or biggest threat facing Ireland as regards plant health? Thanks, Declan. And Ralph, you're very welcome. Any time to Ireland, we'll have to host you uh, if you haven't got to travel in the last few months. Um, yeah, I think what we're seeing now, and and uh, in fairness, the, the the minister has had contributed to, or Ireland had contributed to the uh, impact of climate change on plant health. So what we're finding now is that Ireland were always on the peripheries of of where a pest would establish, whereas now as 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 things are changing, we're now more likely for a pest to establish. So that means that we have to work even harder at our frontiers to prevent uh, these these things coming in because they're more likely to establish. But the reality is a lot of them are are insect based. So we're talking about emerald ash borer which is over at the Ukraine at the moment working and 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 people are trying to prevent it moving any further Asian longhorn beetle again uh, has has been has been quite prevalent uh, in in Asia and we're again trying to stop uh, stop the movement into here uh, Dermot mentioned already Xylella fastidiosa which is causing utter devastation in the olive plantations of southern Italy but also is associated with a huge range of hosts as well uh, including lavender and uh, plane trees and even to oak as well so uh, we we have to be very very cautious of that as well uh, in addition then there's also now that Ireland has to possibly look further for its uh, its source of potato seed, uh, we have to be very careful around brown rot, ring rot, wart disease, potato spindle tuber, viroid. So again, it's putting a lot of, of focus on the on the, the frontier at Dublin Port, Dublin Airport, uh, and again, uh, we, we we to to our, our excellent producers then in terms of relying on them to to let us know what's coming in because obviously it's better off to find it coming in at the port than it is having been planted on your in your field or in your nursery or in the garden centre and us having to take action there so that's why it's a full collaborative effect i think is the best way to do this thanks Eglin. thank you very uh, just Ralph, back to yourself uh, just wonder uh, all the other speakers have said today that you're the creator 
of, of this uh, great year international year of plant health. And then you talk in your own answer last time about the you know the challenge we had with COVID. And just for yourself, is there any uh, favourite moments or or highlights to the year that 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 happened that, that you're very proud of? Oh, uh, uh, that is actually a difficult <laughs> question because so much happened. And uh, uh, but um, I'm, I must say well, some of the highlights which I have seen. Uh, is, uh, for instance, was the opening ceremony uh, uh, where uh, uh, the Irish minister, uh, Andrew Doyle, was present and also uh, uh, other dignitaries. That was an immensely, uh, 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 an immensely uh, popular affair and event. Uh, one of the highlights has also been uh, that uh, uh, Belgium was able to to mint a special two euro coin uh, for the International Year of Plant Health, uh, uh, which, which is certainly uh, uh, something which will be seen by collectors at least in 100 years still. Uh, so uh, uh, a number of countries have made stems. But uh, I think from a programmatic highlight, I would say that the study on climate change impacts on plant health has been, in my opinion, one of the legacy uh, developments of the International Year of Plant Health because it really uh, uh, is this, uh, uh, the starting uh, shot uh, to get us working on how to analyze the uh, impacts of climate change on the behavior of pests and diseases and how it will affect our countries in the future. So. These are a little bit the highlights, and I must say, uh, from a very, very personal position, uh, it has been the immense contact with a lot of colleagues and the very close cooperation with a lot of colleagues, which was for me a very, very rewarding uh, of part of the International Year of Plant Health, amongst them, Ireland. Thank you, Ralph. Um, just Barry, back to yourself, um, just one here on Brexit. And ask and deal with the impact of Brexit on the horticulture industry in Ireland. Yeah, look, I think they were probably the first to feel the impact because immediately what happened was uh, the the prices were changing in terms of the sterling. So we. It, 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 we we are more an importer than exporter of, of plants. Uh, so I'll, I'll probably deal more with, with, with amenity side rather than the fruit and veg side, given the audience here, I think. But um, again, just in terms of the pricing then, that, that's immediately what impacted. And then secondly was then looking at the changes in the UK in terms of how they're approaching plant health. So uh, in a lot of other areas, there's a liber liberalization in terms of the trade, but actually in fact, what we're finding on the plant health side is that they're taking much stronger measures. So they are taking additional measures beyond those that the EU would take. And this is, this is their prerogative as a, a new uh, a new member a new uh, third country and uh, so what's, what we're actually starting to see now and I touched on a little bit earlier on is that there's actually great opportunity now because again they're starting to look west not east in terms of where they want to buy product and we have three nurseries now who have been expanding uh, their product in order to try and, and get access to that market um, and I think there, there is a huge scope and opportunity there for for, uh, for the Irish nursery sector in particular uh, in, to be able to supply uh, into the UK market um, uh, and again, opportunities again for us to grow domestically uh, plants that we would have relied heavily on from the UK. And again, through seasonality and through our own climate, we're able to do that. And I think there are people again investing in that. So I think it's a great opportunity. Uh, and again, we have very close relationships with our UK uh, colleagues uh, and they fully understand our approach to, to plant health and, and respect that. And, and uh, um, that, that's reflected, I think, in the, in the trade that's happening. Thanks, Declan. Thank you, Barry. Uh, yeah, we have a number of more questions that we're just not going to get to today from time constraints. Uh, I'd just like to thank our panelists for, for answering the questions and uh, we will revert on the other questions over the next few days. And I'll hand it back to yourself, Mr. Minister. Uh, thank, thank you very much, Declan. Um, just to say thanks to everyone for joining us today. Um, I certainly must look out for those limited edition Belgian coins. I'll, I'll be searching my purse the next time I'm in it. And of course, I suppose a quick mention uh, of Beastie the Bug, who's been traveling around the country and has now ended up, I see, in Barry's office or traveling around the world, I should say. So uh, Beastie there to highlight all the things we don't want in our plants. So 
Um, look, thank you all very much. Thanks to the, the panelists. Thanks to, to, to Ralph, to Barry and to Jermud, who we did manage to get back. And look, this is a, you know, let's keep this momentum going. Let's keep the awareness going. And, you know, let's keep celebrating our role here, you know, highlighting the International Year of Plant Health. And finally, I suppose, to remember to protect plants and protect life. Thank you very much and bye-bye. Thank you very much. Thank you. Take care.